Good to go. Justin, behind me is this beautiful lake. I can't be any better right now. I'm not in the middle of a hurricane. I'm not near you. I'm perfect. It is. <laughs> I think this should be the final main event, the final match at Hell in a Cell. You have Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins. There's not really any drama, any intrigue there. Yeah, you have Chris Jericho doing a great job um, with what Jericho's been doing in that feud. But Sasha and Charlotte inside Hell in a Cell, first time ever. I think you need to put this at the end. Yes, there's high expectations, Justin. There's always going to be high expectations. And I wrote about it as well as you did. We have some differing opinions on that. But it is a reality. How could it not be a reality when these women have done pretty much everything that's been asked of them? They've delivered every single time. I see Charlotte and Sasha as two of the most consistent workers in WWE right now. Make it different. It's an October pay-per-view. It's not one of the big four or big three or big five. Whatever you want to throw in there is the main pay-per-views of the calendar year. This should be a reality check. Would you agree? But they're not your daughters, Justin. They're, they're talented, talented women. They're not your daughters. They're going to be fine. They're going to lay it all out there. Come on. Reality check or not, Justin, uh, the cruiserweight division featured on WWE Raw, the cruiserweight division, reality or not, has delivered so far. Well, I think it is a reality, actually. I think they have delivered for a few reasons. You're introducing young, exciting characters that the overall WWE Universe might not be familiar with while keeping a veteran who I've been a huge fan of for many years, and you know that, in the Brian Kendrick. They're delivering and they're taking it slow. You don't want to throw somebody down our throats so quickly. Look what's happened with many WWE performers over the years that we've seen for a month or two just completely dominate and people don't care for anymore. I think the Cruiserweight division needs two segments, very beginning of Raw, maybe the second or third segment. But yes, you also can use them after 10 o'clock because 90% of people who have seen these talents already were watching them on the WWE Network. And whether you like it or not, the WWE Network is filled more with people like you and me, Justin, watching the Cruiserweight Classic than nine, 10 year olds who aren't familiar with them. I, and, I, and I think so too, and obviously they change the ropes and they do the different production, which takes a couple of extra minutes. But I think you have a very great point there. I think it's very possible that WWE could be doing that and Vince could say, well, I don't want these high flyers in with a guy who, who can only do two or three minutes. It's a good point. No, it's, it's, it's not relevant. And the only reason it's relevant is because marks all over the internet want to 
uh, hype Paige as their girl, the internet girl, the girl that everybody can get because Paige isn't looking like Charlotte or Dana Brooke or any of these other beautiful, amazing looking women, and she's more of the gothic type that fans can, for whatever reason, connect to. It's not relevant to me. I'm so sick and tired of hearing this. If I wanted to see this, if I wanted to hear this, I'd watch Total Bellas, but I'm not. I don't care about Paige. I don't care about Alberto Del Rio. Why is this relevant in the wrestling world whatsoever? And why do even people that we work for think that this story is so big, so important, needs all this publicity? Oh my God, I need a drink after watching this crap for many weeks. It's terrible. Yeah. And it's nothing to do with them personally, but it's just the fact that every media coverage, whether it's TMZ, whether it's us at WrestleZone, whether it's Upgroove, whether whatever is, is making this bigger than it should be. And it's two people who aren't even really wrestling on a regular basis. It's somebody who, um, you know, like you said, is griping, is complaining and bitching about that, like, a, like an 18 year old girl just graduating and going to college. Um, and she's dating her 40 year old boyfriend. Who cares? It happens all the time. Just the fact that they're in the spotlight is, it's frustrating because I don't care about either of them personally. I wish they had their privacy. It seems like they want their privacy. But then again, you have Paige putting pictures up when she's in the hospital with her boyfriend next to her in the bed. Give me a break. Ridiculous. But anyway, I don't want to talk more about Paige or Del Rio. Let's talk about something relevant. And a guy who hasn't been relevant in 12 years came back this past Monday. Reality check or not, Justin, Goldberg should have more than one match upon his WWE return. Well, yeah, and I agree. I think it's a reality, too. I think you can get two, maybe three matches from Goldberg, but you don't want to do more than that. I mean, you don't want Goldberg this time next year still kind of lingering around. You got to finish him off at WrestleMania 33 in Orlando. You have to put him into the Hall of Fame, and that's obviously the overall plan here. The fact that they're doing it at Survivor Series raises questions for me why they're doing it at that point in time. Why not hold off Goldberg? And I know the video game release and everything like that. I understand that. I understand the marketing ploys behind it, but you could get more. As much as I like the fact that they're going to be fighting at Survivor Series, you were right when saying they should be in the Alamo Dome in front of 60,000 people. But I don't know who Goldberg should face. That's the problem with me. Does anybody really, really care to see a Goldberg John Cena or a Goldberg Undertaker? There's no streak there anymore, so it can't be the best streaks in WWE and uh, professional wrestling history. I just, I'm weary because I don't know if people are going to like Goldberg inside of the ring more than they did this past Monday night. I think he peaked too soon, too good. Yes, it was passionate. I'm just not sure what else you can get from a guy who's 49 years old and has been out of the ring for over a decade. Well, you're gonna fanboy out, aren't you? You're gonna fanboy out for Kennedy, aren't you? All right, my man, sounded good, huh? 